One of the other things that's been missing for us coming up to making this decision is that the government in their analysis claim that actually the economic impact will be minimal if there is no change to immigration. Well, that's funny. The Prime Minister has put all her effort into creating a hostile environment just to drive European immigration down. Their own economic assessment shows that European immigration contributes at least 2% to GDP, and the migration report showed that they contribute over £2,300 a head more to public finances. These people help our economy as well as our public services, as well as our communities. And in Scotland, we need people for our demographics and our economic growth. And we welcome them. And that's why we need control of immigration. Because if the government's plans to set a threshold of £30,000 go ahead, Three quarters of the European citizens here now wouldn't qualify. And the impact of that across public services would be immense. The failure in 2016 was to fail to talk about the benefits of Europe, what they contribute to our workforce in public services, particularly health. Health isn't delivered by machines and hospitals, it's delivered by people. Health care workers, social care workers, they don't earn over 30,000. Junior nurses, care workers, junior doctors even, don't earn over 30,000. And 150,000 of them look after us when we're sick. We've also had the opportunity to carry a European health insurance card that has allowed even people on dialysis to travel to Europe. You tell me, what's the price of health insurance that will cover that? It's allowed our pensioners to retire to the sun, where they paid no tax, but they've been able to transfer their rights. The European Medicines Agency hasn't increased bureaucracy. It decreased it by creating a single licensing system. And while the government talks about replacing research money, research isn't just about funding. It's about collaboration. And you can't sit in a muddy field on your own and call it collaboration. We are only going to lose. We lose the public health drive and pressure that we've had from Europe. We lose that collaboration and we lose both the academic and medical research. Earlier, one of the MPs, maybe the member for Uxbridge, was dismissing concerns about radioisotopes. Yeah. It's funny, the president of the Royal College of Radiologists is concerned about access to radioisotopes. UK doesn't manufacture them. Molybdenum has a half-life of 66 hours, and we have to import it from elsewhere. And up until now, since the loss and crisis in 2009, the Euratom Supply Agency has managed that supply. It will be diminishing as these old reactors go offline. And we'll be outside begging to have the chance, can we please have enough technetium for our patients? These are the things that we are going to lose.